Right, so this is a suggestion via Patreon. The name of the video is uh, Gorilla vs. Gigantopithecus, uh, the only primate that could have defeated a gorilla. Listen, by the sound of it, the name at least, uh, probably a dinosaur. I believe it, right? Let's get it. Let's jump into it, guys. The only primate that could have defeated a gorilla. Primates are a diverse and fascinating group of animals right. that we've talked about in the past. These furry friends of ours okay. include <laughs> monkeys, apes, lemurs, and... Bob. You guessed it, humans. Okay. With over an insane number of 500 species found across the globe, primates have adapted to a wide range of habitats and lifestyles. From the treetops of tropical rainforests to Dubai and to like Manhattan to the arid savannas of Africa. However, when you think about the greatest primate, only one species must come to mind. Right, it's definitely going to be That's got to be bro. the gorilla. The silverback. Let's learn a little about the inspiration behind King Kong, shall we? The gorilla is one of the largest and most powerful primates with males weighing up to 400 pounds, 272 kilograms, and standing over six feet, 1.82 meters tall, when fully upright. They are native to Central and Eastern Africa, and are divided into two species, the Western Gorilla and the Eastern Gorilla. You'd think these beasts would devour any prey that came into their sight, yeah, basically, but in reality, gorillas are herbivores. Gorillas live in stable groups led by a dominant male known as a silverback who is responsible for protecting the group from predators and other threats. Now that we know all this, I'm right. sure you're wondering about the title of this video. Is there truly a primate that could have defeated a silver? Okay, yeah, as long as you give us that caveat mainly, it could have, then obviously there's gonna be something larger that spawned the overall silver act gorilla or most of the primates that are kind of here still, right? Um, but if, if there's anything that's like right now in terms of a primate that can handle a gorilla, it'll probably be a human, but they're gonna have to have uh, you know multiple tools, okay? Uh, to say the least, and just hope that there's not one. Uh, hopefully you're not alone is what I mean. Um, then you probably have a much better chance, like multiple people versus a sil silver back gorilla with multiple firearms at hand or at toe, right? Um, but primate versus primate, nah. Silverback gorilla. Well, to answer your question, we're talking about the Gigantopithecus. So let's deep dive into who this strange primate was and how he might have been able to defeat the gorilla. It's going to be like double the size. Gigantopithecus least. was a type of giant ape that lived in what is now China, India, and Vietnam during the Pleistocene Epoch, around 9 million years ago. For some frame of reference, our ancestors have been around on Earth for only 6 million years. The first evidence of Gigantopithecus was discovered in the early 20th century by a German paleoanthropologist named Gustav Heinrich Ralph von Königswald. While visiting a pharmacy, bro, that name is spectacular. In Hong Kong, we definitely need to go back to naming people with like long names that pretty much said where they were from, right? In 1935, he noticed a large molar for sale. Like example, I have a, um, a friend. Uh, she's from Russia. Um, I'm just gonna say her last name, uh, Alexandrovna, or something like that. I think it's like the the daughter of Alex, or something like that. Guys, we definitely need names that are spectacular, right? Um, Bob, John, and Chris are not cool names, guys. I'm sorry. That he believed belonged to an unknown primate species. How crazy is that? Konigswald later conducted several expeditions to southern China, where he found additional fossils of Gigantopithecus, including mandibles, teeth, and some cranial fragments. And since then, additional Gigantopithecus fossils have been found in caves and rock shelters across Southeast Asia, providing further insights into the anatomy, behavior, and evolution of this enigmatic primate. Size and features. Yeah, most important thing right here. 
let's talk a little about the size of the Gigantopithecus. Okay. It has Giganto in its name, so it's got to be big, right? Absolutely. Well, the Gigantopithecus is considered the largest primate that ever lived, with estimates suggesting that it weighed up to 1,200 pounds, Three times. 545 kilograms, okay. and stood over 10 feet tall. Three. Bro, no chance. I don't even think, honestly, we could even have something like this in a zoo. Just gonna be honest. Um, if they do eat nothing but like plants, that's a good thing, right? But I still don't think, like, based off of what, like, pretty common typical gorillas can put out in terms of strength, uh, I don't think we have glass strong enough for that, guys. I don't know. Um, but our three meters. We could not However, house this animal. The exact size of Gigantopithecus remains a subject of debate among paleoanthropologists, as the species is known only from a limited number of fossil specimens. But based on the size and shape of the teeth and mandibles, mm -hmm. scientists have estimated that Gigantopithecus was around three times the size of a modern gorilla. The teeth of Gigantopithecus were massive, with molars measuring up to 10 centimeters, 4 inches long, and five centimeters, two inches wide. Overall, <laughs> when we talk about its physical features, it's believed that Gigantopithecus had a robust and heavily muscled body with broad shoulders and a barrel-shaped chest. Its arms were also likely elongated, similar to those of modern-day orangutans, enabling it to move through the forest canopy with ease. But beyond that, Due to a lack of information, there's not much else we know about their physical features. We don't know the color of Gigantopithecus's fur, or the exact size and shape of its head and hands. But based on comparisons with modern great apes, it is likely that Gigantopithecus had a relatively small brain for its body size, as well as imagine. a broad and flat face. Diet the Gigantopithecus's teeth are all we really have to go on. Right, so we can go ahead and guess that it's going to be the same as modern-day primates. So we must know a little about their diet, right? Well, the Gigantopithecus is believed to have been a herbivore, with a diet consisting mainly of plants, such as fruits, leaves, and other forest plants. However, its thick enamel suggests the Gigantopithecus consumed abrasive items like dirt particles on food gathered near or on the ground, such as bamboo shoots. The teeth of Gigantopithecus have a markedly low rate of pitting, which suggests a more generalist diet, potentially including chewing, crushing, and grinding bulky and fibrous materials like stems, roots, and grasses. Extinction so why did these primates go extinct in the first place? Well, the extinction of the Gigantopithecus is still not entirely clear, but several theories attempt to explain it. One theory is that changes in the environment led to the disappearance of the food sources that the Gigantopithecus relied on. With so definitely way before humans had any type of ability to actually change their food sources dwindling, anything. the population may have declined and eventually gone extinct. Another theory suggests that competition with other hominids, such as early humans, played a role in their extinction. As these hominids became more advanced and began hunting and gathering resources more efficiently, they may have outcompeted the Gigantopithecus for resources. Additionally, some researchers believe that the Gigantopithecus may have simply been unable to adapt to changing environmental conditions since around 100,000 yeah, years likely. ago, the Pleistocene mm. Ice Age. I'll be honest, I don't think they lasted, they don't, I don't think they lasted that long, right? Um, if you're saying that they came roughly 9 million years, humans came about 3 million years after that, which would have been 6 million years. And then he's referring to the Pleistocene Ice Age at 100,000 years. I don't think that they lasted that entire time with humans on Earth if they were competing for the same exact food, guys. Um, just going to be honest here, guys. They would have been hunted to to basic extinction because they because 
probably humans or human-like beings, right? Um, wanted them nowhere near their food sources. Uh, maybe they were um, super aggressive. Uh, that could be something, but I don't think that they lasted that long, mainly if, uh, well, I don't think they lasted, uh, you know, um, what is it, uh, 8 million, 900 years, guys. I don't think so. Good. It's also possible years. that they may have faced disease outbreaks that weakened their populations. Anyhow, it is generally agreed upon that a combination of these environmental, biological, and ecological factors contributed to the disappearance of this giant primate. Gorilla versus... But I mean, guys, but giant, giant in this very specific context is um, kind of subjective because, to be honest, a silverback gorilla is a is giant at 400 pounds and six feet tall that's that's for the most part a giant i mean it's not 10 feet and and 1200 pounds i get it but i would still consider the the you know the, the standard variety of uh, of silverback gorillas giants gigantopithecus finally let's end it off with a little comparison battle between the gigantopithecus and the modern day silverback gorilla to let's see go. if the prehistoric primate can keep up with its descendant. First off, let's compare their sizes. Yeah, 10 feet, the Gigantopithecus 12, 12, and the pounds. Silverback Gorilla were both massive primates, but the Gigantopithecus was significantly larger. Right. As we mentioned before, Gigantopithecus stood at around 10 feet tall and weighed around 1,200 pounds, while the Silverback Gorilla can grow up to six feet tall grow. and weigh up to 500 pounds. In terms of a hypothetical battle between these two primates, if we were to compare their sizes, it's possible that the Gigantopithecus could have an advantage due to its larger size and weight. With its massive jaws and teeth, this primate likely had a strong bite force and could have inflicted some serious damage on the silverback. However, it's also important to consider the gorilla's strength. They have powerful muscles and are capable of impressive displays of force. But wouldn't the Gigantopithecus also had the same thing, but three times more? Guys, if, if this was a battle based off of what we're, we've learned so far, at least, right? Uh, I would definitely give it to the, to the uh, Gigantopithecus, just purely based off of looking at what the Silverback Gorilla actually has and is right now. Um, I mean, I get it. The, the, the Silverback Gorilla is maybe a little bit smaller, um, but probably be a little bit more agile. But just pure, unbridled strength, the Gigantopithecus will definitely have it, guys. It will. Without a doubt. It has it. Uh, I, don't even, I don't even think this is a, a battle anymore, guys. Right? Um, I don't know how many humans it would take to take down one of those things, but um, I wouldn't try. Such as tearing apart branches and uprooting trees. In addition, gorillas are highly agile, with the ability to climb trees and move quickly through dense forest environments. But the other one would also. It might be a classic David versus Goliath situation. It would have to be, yeah. But we're going to give this point to the Gigantopithecus due to its unimaginable size. Right. Secondly, in terms of intelligence, it's challenging to compare the Gigantopithecus and the Silverback Gorilla as there is limited evidence available about the former. However, based on the cranial capacity of Gigantopithecus, it is suggested that they were relatively intelligent animals. They were primates after all. In contrast, mm -hmm. silverback gorillas are known to be highly intelligent and exhibit complex social behavior. They can use tools, communicate through various vocalizations and body language, and possess a strong memory. Studies have shown that gorillas are capable of problem solving and have been observed using basic tools in the wild, such as using sticks to measure the depth of water before crossing. Also, in terms of social intelligence, silverbacks exhibit a complex hierarchy within their troop, with the leader maintaining social order and mediating conflict between members. They and like based off of all of what we know about gorillas, again, I I would think that the Gigantopithecus would be identical, just larger. Um, and yeah, the brain is small, small compared to what exactly? Um, 
think about the size. It's, it's pro- it was probably the size of our uh, brains at the smallest, right? Um, so yeah, I, I, I imagine that, they're, that they were probably smarter than gorillas are. They were also able to recognize and remember individual members of their troop, as well as form strong bonds with them. Additionally, silverbacks have been observed exhibiting empathy and compassion toward other members of their troop, especially toward young gorillas. All of this goes hand in hand to confirm the advantages of the evolutionary process. If Gigantopithecus had the opportunity to evolve into modern-day versions of themselves, it might have been able to display the same levels of intelligence. I would We're going it. to have to give this point to the gorilla. But why? In the end, it seems that both the gorilla and the Gigantopithecus are evenly matched. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to stay up to date on videos like this. See you next time. All right. So here's the thing, guys, right? Um, here's a channel oh, right here, guys, if you guys want to subscribe. I subscribe to every single um, channel that I react to, right? But anyway, so here's the thing. Um, I don't know why the gorilla got the point, uh, personally. Um, if you're comparing two things, pure unbridled strength, the Gigantopithecus has it. Uh, intelligence, I would say the same exact thing. I can only imagine that they were probably just identical in their ways, right? Um, so that's the thing that kind of loses me, at least, right? I don't think that the, that the gorilla deserved the point in this instance here. Um, because I do think the Gigantopithecus is just going to take it regardless, guys. I'm definitely interested in, uh, in hearing your opinions, though, guys, so just let me know in the comments, all right? And uh, listen, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day and enjoy your day thoroughly.